Good morning and welcome to our ongoing study on the book of Acts. We're in chapter 20. Uh, Paul now is on his journey home. He started on his missionary tours in AD 45 and we're 12 or 13 years later. He ends up Jerusalem in AD 58. So 13 years of ministry, basically intense ministry for Paul. He now travels down the west coast of Asia Minor, passes by Ephesus and docks in at Miletus, some kilometers south, and then requests for the elders from Ephesus to come down to him so he can give them what is called a charge. The charge in the second half of chapter 20 of Acts can be divided into four. The first part is what I would call his track record. He lays out his track record for them. The second part is he then indicates what his plans are in terms of what the Spirit has been telling him. The third is their formal charge when he charges them and encourages them to complete the task he has laid out for them. And the fourth then is their response when he tells them what his future will be. He says, you know how I lived the whole time I was with you from the first day I came into the province of Asia. He's now saying, listen, you can see how I've lived. His life has been exemplary and he's going to tell us, but he's been a model. And Paul was often heard to say, follow me as I have followed Christ. And each Christian should be able to do that by way of application. We should be able to model Christ and say, others follow my example. So that's what Paul says. You know how I've lived since I've been first set foot in Asia. He then says, I serve the Lord with great humility and with tears, although I have severely tested by the plots of the Jews. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I've declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. Then he says in verse 26, Therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. So what he's saying is, you know it's been a tough time for me. We've been under huge pressure and harassment and imprisonment from the Jews, but I've preached publicly and from house to house, and I haven't hesitated to declare to you the whole counsel of God. I'm innocent of your blood. And we know through Paul's ministry, the whole province of Asia came to hear about Christ, and many, many came through to faith, and a similar thing happened in Europe. So Paul's able to say, my life has been exemplary. I've acted in humility. I have wept at times and cried for under the pressure we've been under, but also wept for the potential converts that the Jews have pulled away from me. And so it's been a tough, tough run for him these 13 years. He then goes on in verse 33. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself when he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So Paul's able to say, I've never taken from you. I've never been a burden to you. I've never abused your hospitality. My own hands have worked hard as a tent maker to support myself and my companions. We've been a blessing to you and we haven't drawn on you. And that's a lovely thing to say, that it's you haven't had to support me, he's saying. I've supported myself. So it's a lovely witness and testimony. He remember he spent three years in Ephesus. So that's his track record, his CV, as it were. Now we move into the second half where he tells them his plans. Verse 22, and now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. So while Paul's been traveling, various prophets have come and said, listen, when you go to Jerusalem, you do know you're going to be arrested and imprisoned. And yet Paul goes anyway because he wants to discharge the call that God has given him. He wants to get to Rome. He doesn't know how that's going to happen, but actually gets arrested in Jerusalem and eventually gets shipped out uh, as a prisoner to Rome. And he's there under house arrest and he's uh, imprisoned several times and eventually he ends his life in Rome. 
and but his ministry in Rome is also powerful and many come through the faith. So he went to Rome as he wished, not as a free man, but as a prisoner eventually. But he's telling these Ephesians, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I've been told by the Spirit of God that I'll be imprisoned. But that's okay. I must discharge the gospel that has been given to me. I must complete the race. That's what every Christian, run the race, don't give up. Make sure we discharge the call that God has given us. The third element then is what we call the formal charge to the Ephesian elders. And he uses the metaphor of a shepherd. And uh, remember, we've got the shepherd metaphor in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. We've got Jesus teaching in John 10 about the shepherd calling out the sheep by name and then following him and listening to his voice. So with that as the background, which they would all have been aware of, we get these words. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Now, some churches and translations say overseers means bishops, but it's highly unlikely that there have been bishops in Ephesus at this time. He's called the elders. The elders are the ones who give an oversight uh, of the church in Ephesus. Ephesus. So overseer means what it says. They're overseeing the work here. And he says, be shepherds, look after the people, love them, care for them, nurture them. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Remember, the church and the people under our care are not ours. They are the Lord's. They belong to the Lord. He's purchased them, with his, purchased them with his precious blood. Look after them. And now another role that the shepherd has is to protect them. And so he warns of the dangers that will assail the church in days and years to come. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. And so the responsibility of a shepherd, a pastor, a house group leader, even a family leader, is to look after those under your care and be careful of Satan's attempts to try and uh, pull people away from the kingdom of God. We know he does it by persecution and by temptation, but one of his main ways is by deception. People within the church may be deceiving people and running off to some heretical view uh, which and overemphasizing a particular point at the expense of others. Watch that. And so now he commits them into God's care of his word because when we're based on the word, we can protect ourselves against the savage wolves. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So he says, Beware of wolves, I'm committing you to the word of God's grace, basically. Stand on the word and you'll be safe. And there'll be an inheritance that has been prepared for you in glory. And then fourthly and finally, we get the response of the Ephesian elders when he has told them he's about to leave. When he'd said this, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. So Paul had been with them for three years, and now he says goodbye, and they're brokenhearted. He's given of himself. He's poured himself out. People have come to faith in Christ. Their families are Christian. They're worshiping and loving the Lord. They're serving the Lord. The church is on fire. And Paul's about to leave after a long-term ministry. And they are broken up about it, and so they weep. They hug him and they bid him farewell. And it's a, it's a good testimony to Paul's ministry that he didn't leave and with a bad odor, but left with the blessing of the church, knowing uh, that he was loved by them and appreciated by them. Friends, the application, I think, is fairly obvious. We are shepherds of the flock. Our lives must be exemplary and we must uh, represent Christ wherever we go, always discharging the call of God on our lives and being faithful to the end running the race right to the end, crossing the finishing line and entering glory. Bless you as you seek to do that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this teaching today. May it impact our lives and may Paul be a model for all of us in terms of how to do ministry. We ask your blessing on each of us and our families in your precious name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.